strange. Something quite novel, which is not very usual. When that happens and you observe it, or you hear about it, generally, mark my word, generally, if it is not really from God, there will be some kind of disturbance in your inner man. I'm talking something very delicate. There will be a kind of disturbance in your inner man, which means the Holy Spirit who is resident in you gets disturbed. At the first disturbance itself, keep yourself away. Don't keep on arguing with your conscience. If you keep on arguing with your conscience, you are blunt your conscience. Because Holy Spirit is not a lion, He is a gentle dove. He will not always strive with you. He will only give you a gentle whisper. That we should always understand. The Holy Spirit does not blow dynamites within our heart. That's why the Bible says, don't, don't grieve the Spirit. What does it mean? You can very easily grieve Him, hurt Him. And if you keep on hurting Him, a point will come when He will be quenched. Hey, man, can He quench God the Holy Spirit? Yes, He's so gentle. He doesn't quit, quit you, but He gets quenched. If He quits you better, He doesn't. You throw Him to a corner and He sits quietly, he becomes inactive because you are quenched him. You are greed him again and again. Finally, he takes a passive attitude. So you go from deception to deception. You are quenching him. You are putting him off. Possibility. Do not quench the spirit. So the Holy Spirit only gives a whisper. He doesn't shout aloud always. So if there is a little bit of disturbance, that's an indication. Is it in the Bible? Yes. Turn with me to 1 John, 2nd chapter. 1 John, 2nd chapter, verse 27. The anointing which you have received from God abides in you. That's why I use the word abiding spirit or residential spirit. And you do not need that anyone should teach you. Anyone should tell you is right or wrong. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, just as it has taught you, you will abide in Him. Now some people take these words and say, I don't want any Bible teachers, I don't want any pastor, I don't want any study Bible, God the Holy Spirit Himself will teach me. That is not what is the meaning of this text. The meaning of the text is given to us in verse 26 of the same chapter. 1 John 2, 2, 26. These things I have written to you, Concerning those who try to deceive you. Concerning those who are trying to deceive you, you know, some preacher comes, or some program comes, or some book comes, or some magazine comes. About that, the Holy Spirit says, nobody needs to tell you whether it is right or wrong. My anointing is within you. There will be a disturbance within you. That anointing will tell you whether it is from me or not. Blessed be the name of the Lord for the resident Holy Spirit. That safety measure is already built in within us. We need to really thank God for it, isn't it? That is why the Holy Spirit does not make shunting trips between heaven and earth. When we are all right, Holy Spirit resides. When we are not all right, Holy Spirit goes back. Then we get in. No, it's never like that. Even David in the Old Testament, when he committed some of the horrible sin in his life, he did not say, Lord, give me back the Holy Spirit which you took away from me two years ago. That's not what he said. He said, Lord, do not take the Holy Spirit from me. He was scared. But in the New Testament, you know what Jesus said? When the Holy Spirit comes, He shall always abide with you. Me? No! I abode with you only for three and a half years. Now I am saying, Tata! But the Holy Spirit who is going to be with you, He shall abide with you forever. So it's for your good I am going. Because I came for three and a half years. He is going to be forever. Until He will take this Rebecca and hands him over to the heavenly Isaac as the bridegroom, the Holy Spirit will not leave you. And we really thank God for the indwelling, residential ministry of the Holy Spirit. So Apostle John wrote, there is an anointing that is inside of you. Nobody needs to tell you, there will be a little bit of disturbance, but at the first and the slightest disturbance, you should become alert. 
You should not begin to be flirting with that experience. The Bible says the Holy Spirit in us, the Spirit in us is earning to jealousy. You know, there's the language of uh, the spouses. You know, a husband and wife, let's say that they're here and then suddenly a husband goes and then he talks to a very beautiful young girl. Immediately do you think the wife will say, Oh, get the camera, my husband is now with a beautiful girl. No, it's going to be a beautiful picture. No, she won't do it. Her spirit will be stirred. She won't even mind this good, all delicious dishes which are around here. She look there. It's a safety. She cannot see anybody, her husband just flirting with somebody else. The spirit in her will yearn to jealousy. It gets stirred up. Deep bubble moments. The same language the apostles are employing here. The spirit in us is earning to jealousy. He cannot tolerate us flirting us with experiences which are not biblical. Then immediately somebody says, Beloved, but if it is the work of the Holy Spirit and it is not in the Bible and uh, if I don't embrace that experience, won't I grieve the Holy Spirit? I want to tell you something. It is not something that is questionable if you don't accept that's going to grieve the Holy Spirit. But you embrace everything as the work of the Holy Spirit, that will grieve the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? That's why the Bible says, Beloved, Believe not all spirits. Test whether they are of God. Because many false spirits and false antichrist have gone into the world. The biblical principle is very interesting. Turn with me to First Thessalonians 5th chapter. You know, it's very conclusive. First Thessalonians 5th chapter. I'll read to you verses 90 to 22. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Encircle the word all. Test everything. Bring everything under the scriptural scrutiny. Subject it to the test. God is not going to be grieved by that. Only if you don't test it, God will be grieved. Because He wants you to test. Test all things. And hold fast that which is good and that which is biblical. Does it stop there? No. It goes one step further. Abstain from every appearance or form of evil. In other words, even if something is somewhat questionable, go away. Right? Even if it is somewhat questionable, distance yourself. That's not for you. And that's not for me. Let us look at the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ concerning the second comforter and let us claim that promise for all of us for these days, for difficult days that we are living in. I want every one of you to just claim this promise for you. Whenever you remember that, John 16, 13 and 14. When He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. What is the truth, all truth? It is a truth teaching given by the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we say that? The next word says, He will not speak on his own authority. It's a very important truth. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit does not speak of his own authority. Jesus himself said, this is a truth, very difficult truth, but this is a truth given by the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit does not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, that he will speak. And he will tell you the things to come. And he says in verse 14, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. In other words, the Holy Spirit will only take the doctrine of Christ